What's your view? Let me put on my Russian hat, which believes that life is I suffering. I like Russian hats, by the way. If you have one, I would like this. Those are ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in a delightful way. But sure. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what do you think is the role of, uh, we talked about balance a little bit. Mm. What do you think is the role of hardship in education? Like, I think the biggest things I've learned, like the what made me fall in love with math, for example, is by being bad at it until I got good at it. So like, like struggling with a problem, which increased the level of joy I felt when I finally figured it out. And it always felt with me, with teachers, especially modern discussions of education, how can we make education more fun, more engaging, more all those things? Or from my perspective, it's like you're maybe missing the point that education, that life is suffering. <laughs> education is supposed to be hard and that actually what increases the joy you feel when you actually learn something. Is that r ridiculous? <laughs> Do you like no, to I see don't. your students suffer? <laughs> okay, so th this may be a point where we differ. I suspect not, okay. but do go on. Well, what would your answer be? I wanna hear you first. Okay, well, I, what, I was gonna not answer the question. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want the students to I know you gonna, enjoy them suffer? No, 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 no. I was, I was gonna say that there's, I think there's a, a distinction that you can make in the kind of suffering, right? So I think you can be in a mode where you're, you're suffering in a hopeless way versus you're suffering in a hopeful way, right? Where you're like, you can see that if you, that you still have, you can still imagine getting to the end, right? And as long as people are in that mindset where they're struggling, but it's not a hopeless kind of struggling, that's that's productive. I think that's really helpful. But if struggling, like if you you break their will, mm -hmm. if you leave them hopeless, no, that don't. I'm sure, some people are gonna whatever lift themselves up by their bootstraps. But like mostly, you give up, and certainly it takes the joy out of it. And you're not going to spend a lot of time on something that brings you no joy. So it's a, it's, it is a bit of a delicate balance, right? You have to thwart people in a way that they th still believe that there's a way through. Right, so that's a, that I, we strongly agree actually. So I think, well, first off, struggling and suffering aren't the same thing, mm. right? Yeah, one just can, being poetic. Oh no, no I, I actually <laughs> appreciate the poetry. And, and I, one of the reasons I appreciate it is that they are often the same thing and often quite different, right? So you can struggle without suffering. You can certainly suffer, <laughs> suffer, suffer pretty easily. You don't necessarily have to struggle to suffer. So I think that you want people to struggle, but that hope matters. You have to, they have to understand that they're gonna get through it on the other side. And it's very easy to confuse the two. Um, I actually think Brown University has a very, just philosophically has a very different take on the relationship with their students, particularly undergrads from say, a place like Georgia okay. Tech, which is- Which university is uh, better? Uh, well, I have my opinions on that. I mean, remember, Charles said, it doesn't matter what the facts are, I'm always right. The yeah, correct answer he's always right. is that it doesn't matter, they're different, um, but they're clearly, <laughs> clearly <laughs> answers he, he, well, he was. <laughs> He went to a school like the school where he is as an undergrad. Yeah, I right. went to a school specifically the same school, though it was it changed a bit in the in the intervening years. What, Brown or Georgia Tech? No, I was talking about Georgia Tech. And Georgia I went, changed. yeah, and I went to an undergrad place that's a lot like the place where I work now, and so it does seem like we're more familiar with these models. But there's a similarity between Brown and Yale. Like yeah, there's a. I, I think that I think they're quite similar. Yeah, and Duke. Duke has some similarities too, but it's got a little southern. Draw. You've kind of worked your, you sort of worked at universities that are like the places where you learned. Mm. And the same would be true for me. Mm. Are you uncomfortable uh, venturing outside the box? Is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. Journeying out? Is that what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yeah, but Charles is definitely. It, <laughs> he only goes to places that have institute in the name, right? It has worked out that way. Well, academic places anyway. Well, no, I was a visiting scientist at UPenn or visiting visiting something at UPenn. Oh, wow, I just I just understood your joke. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> Five I like minutes to, later. <laughs> I like to set these sort of time bombs. <laughs> the institute is in the, uh, uh, that Charles only goes to places that have institute <laughs> yeah. in the name. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I guess Georgia, I, I forget that Georgia Tech is Georgia Institute, institute of Technology. Technology. The it's number of people who refer to it as Georgia Tech University is University. large and incredibly irritating. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the few things that genuinely gets under my skin. But like schools like Georgia <laughs> Tech and MIT have as part of the ethos, like there is, I want to say there's a there's an abbreviation that 
someone taught me like IHTFP, something like that. Like there's a, there's a, there's an expression, which is basically, I hate being here, which mm -hmm. they say so proudly. And yes. that is definitely not the ethos at Brown. Like Brown is, there's a little more pampering and empowerment and stuff. Yes. And it's not like, we're going to crush you and you're going to love it. So yeah, I think there's a, I think the ethos is, are different. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. We had drown proofing. What's that? Drown in order to proofing. graduate from Georgia Tech, this is a true thing. Feel free to look it up. Uh, <laughs> if you, a lot of schools to, have this, by the way. No, actually, yeah. Georgia Tech was barely the first. Brandeis has it. Had it. I feel like Brandeis Georgia Tech it. was the first in a lot of things. It was the first in a lot of things. It was, it was the first in a lot of things. Um, had the first, first master's degree in mascot. Stop that. Uh, <laughs> first uh, master's in computer science, actually. Right, or, online masters. Well, that too, but oh, way back sorry. in the 60s. Um, oh, NSF really? grant. Yeah, yeah. Nice. You're the first information and in computer science master's degree in the country. Um, wow. But the uh, Georgia Tech, it used to be the case in order to graduate from Georgia Tech, uh, you had to take a drown proofing class where effectively they threw you in water, <laughs> tied you up. If you didn't drown, you got to graduate. Tied in fact, you up? I believe so. You no. had, you basically had, there were certainly versions of it, but I mean, luckily they ended it just before I had to graduate because otherwise we would have never graduated. <laughs> it wasn't going to happen. Uh, I want to say 80. 83, somewhere around then, they, wow. they, they ended it. But uh, yeah, you used to have to prove you could tread water for some ridiculous amount of time. Or you two minutes. You couldn't graduate. It more, no, it was more than two <laughs> I minutes. I bet it was two minutes. Okay, well, we'll look. And it was in a bathtub. It was in a pool. But it was a real yeah. thing. But that idea that, yeah. you know, push you. Fully clothed. Uh, yeah, fully clothed. It, I don't think, I bet, I bet it was that and not tied up. Because like, who needs to learn how to swim when you're tied? Nobody, but who needs to learn when to swim when you're actually falling into the water dressed? That's a real thing. I think your facts are getting in the way with a good story. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. I didn't. didn't <laughs> Thank All you. Right. So they Sometimes tie you the, up. The narrative matters, more. <laughs> but whatever it was, you had to. It was called drown proofing for a reason. The point of the story, yeah. Michael, uh, is struggle. That it, it's well, oh, no, but that's good. It does bring, was, it, it yeah, does bring it back to struggle. Right. That's a part of what Georgia Tech has always been, and we struggle with that, by the way. Uh, about what we want to be and particularly like as, as things go. But you you sort of, how much can you be pushed without breaking? And you come out of the other end stronger, right? The, there's this saying we used to have when I was an undergrad there, which was Georgia Tech, building tomorrow the night before. Right? <laughs> and there's this just kind of, kind of idea that, that's you know, good. give me something impossible to do and I'll do it in a couple of days because that's what I just spent the last four or five or six. This, uh, years that doing. ethos definitely stuck to you. Having now done a number of projects with you, you definitely will do it the night before. That's not entirely true. There's nothing wrong with waiting until the last minute. The secret is knowing when the last minute is. Right. That's br That's brilliantly put. Yeah. That, yeah. That's, that is a definite Charles statement that I am trying not to embrace. <laughs> well, and I appreciate that because you helped move my last minute. Up. <laughs> that's a social construct where you converge together what the definition of last minute is. And right. we, we, we figure that all, all out together. In fact... MIT, you know, I'm, I'm sure a lot of universities have this, but MIT has like MIT time that yeah. everyone has always agreed together that this, there is such a concept and everyone just keeps showing up like 10 to 15 to 20, depending on the mm -hmm. department, late to everything. So there's like a weird drift that happens. It's kind of fascinating. Yeah, we're five minutes. Take we're five, five minutes. minutes. In fact, the classes will say, you know, well, this is no longer true, actually, but it used to be a class was started at eight, but actually it started at 8.05. Yeah. It ends at nine. Actually, it ends at 8.55. Yeah. Uh, everything's five minutes off and nobody expects anything to start until five minutes after the half hour, whatever it is. <laughs> uh, it still exists. It hurts my head. <laughs>